Israeli strike in South Lebanon has killed at least 10 people, including two children, Lebanese state media reported. The Israeli military said the airstrike targeted a weapons depot used by Hezbollah militants. But Lebanese news agency NNA said the victims of the strike on the town of Nabatiyeh were all Syrian citizens and that five people were also wounded. Israel and Lebanon's powerful armed group Hezbollah have exchanged tit-for-tat fire across the border, displacing many thousands of people on both sides since the Gaza conflict broke out in October. The strike, one of the deadliest in Lebanon since then, will stoke fears the Gaza war could inflame the whole region. Hussein Tahmaz owns a factory that was hit, which he says employed the Syrians. There are ten martyrs, he says, among them a whole family of a father, a mother and two children. May they rest in peace. Project engineer at the factory, Yasser Jaber, says it was the janitor's family who were killed, along with some workers who lived on site. He says the factory is a civilian establishment with no military links. Hezbollah said in a statement it had struck the Ayelet Hashahar kibbutz in northern Israel in retaliation for the Nabatiyah strike. The Israeli military said two soldiers were wounded in a rocket attack from Lebanon. Hezbollah has vowed to retaliate against Israel for the killing of one of its top commanders in the southern suburbs of Beirut in late July, as has Iran for the killing in Tehran of the political chief of the Palestinian Hamas group, Ismail Haniyeh. U.S. envoy Amos Hochstein said last week he believed all-out war between Israel and Hezbollah could be avoided, but that Israel and Hamas needed to move towards a peace agreement for Gaza without further delay. Because we continue to believe that no one truly wants a full-scale war. Ceasefire talks in Qatar paused on Friday, with negotiators due to meet again next week. A choking cloud of smoke and dust in Gaza's Al Nusayrat refugee camp is the telltale sign of a deadly Israeli airstrike. And as civilians rush to reach the wounded, the scene underscores the fact that ceasefire talks have not yet secured a pause in fighting. Mediators said negotiations in Qatar's capital, Doha, were paused on Friday, with negotiators set to meet again next week. In a joint statement, the United States, Qatar and Egypt said Washington had presented a new proposal closing gaps between the sides in a way that could allow rapid implementation of a deal. Quote, the path is now set for that outcome, saving lives, bringing relief to the people of Gaza, and de-escalating regional tensions, they said in a statement. While in Lebanon, Egypt's foreign minister said a ceasefire deal may be the only way to avert further escalation. Quickly reaching a deal that leads to an immediate ceasefire, an end to the killing of civilians and an exchange of prisoners and hostages is the key to the beginning of the solution in this region, the beginning of a de-escalation, and the beginning to prevent the region from slipping into the furnace of a comprehensive war. The extent of which only God knows and what it will result in terms of chaos, destruction, and devastation. The conflict began on October 7th when Hamas fighters rampaged into Israel, killing around 1,200 people and seizing around 250 hostages, according to Israeli tallies. Israel's subsequent military campaign has reduced much of Gaza to rubble and killed more than 40,000 Palestinians, mostly civilians, according to Palestinian health authorities. Israel says it has eliminated 17,000 Hamas fighters. An Israeli official said Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was expected to meet with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Monday.